Hi, I'm Elizabeth and welcome to my hormone series. In this series, we're going to look at what hormones are in your body, what are they doing, what should they be doing, and how do you convince them to do what they should be doing. This series is meant for informational purposes only. This is not meant for medical diagnosis. So if you have a question about hormones, please go talk to your doctor about that. But I hope this is helpful for you. Let's dive in. Today we're going to talk about three hormones. So in my first video I talked exclusively about estrogen because it is complicated. Hormones get, mm, they're not less complicated but they're a little bit easier to explain now. So today we're going to talk about progesterone, testosterone and cortisol. So progesterone. Progesterone goes hand in hand with estrogen actually. So it is one of those hormones that's found in everybody but primarily in females. Um, increases with um, the onset of puberty and then drop significantly with menopause. Now, progesterone is a hormone that can cause some subtle problems and um, changes when it is not well regulated during the reproductive years. So what does that look like? Low progesterone is much more common than high progesterone. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today is what does low progesterone look like and how to optimize it. So symptoms of low progesterone, it's progesterone is very tied to fertility. And there are a lot of symptoms of low progesterone that are going to be connected to infertility issues. So just number one, just general infertility is often explained by low progesterone. So people going through fertility treatments might know that um, you may have to supplement with progesterone or um, your progesterone levels will be checked often. They're really, really tied together. Low progesterone can actually cause anovulation or not ovulating for a cycle. Um, it can be connected to PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome, which we're going to talk about in more detail. It can be connected to a history of miscarriages, again, with a fertility theme. Um, low progesterone can actually cause prolonged or heavy periods. Breast tenderness, breast cysts, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts. Hypothyroidism is also something that be, can be connected to low progesterone and low libido. So there's a lot of similarities between symptoms of low progesterone and symptoms of high estrogen. And one thing I didn't mention when I was talking about estrogen, because I needed to bring this in too, is that sometimes they're relative. So sometimes you um, might have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone to keep up, or sometimes you might have your estrogen levels might be fine, but your progesterone levels are low. But sometimes the difference is that if your progesterone levels are fine, but it looks like you have low progesterone because your estrogen levels are high, if that makes sense. So sometimes the two can be measured relatively. But that's not really, I'm, I'm speaking here from a symptom perspective. What you want to do, like anything that you think might be off, is if you are wondering if you have low progesterone, head on over to your doctor and get them to assess. Do blood work, they're going to they're gonna take it at a certain time of the month, they know what levels should be like. That's where you want to start. So how to optimize progesterone. Um, there's going to be a lot of common themes in here when I talk about how to optimize hormones because a lot of what you would do for one hormone you would do for all of them. So same thing with every hormone. You're going to want to focus on eating a whole foods diet with lots of veggies. You're going to want to exercise daily. You're going to want to make sure you're getting a good night's sleep. All of those are just import are important generally across the board for overall hormonal health, metabolism, detoxification, all of those things. Um, soy and freshly ground flaxseed. So phytoestrogens are compounds found in plants that mimic estrogen. So when estrogen levels in the body are too low, they kind of turn the volume up for you. When estrogen levels are too high, they kind of turn the volume down. So soy, so two, so soy, um, soy milk, tofu, or two tablespoons of freshly ground flaxseed are three of my most favorite recommendations for a phytoestrogen that you can include daily. Um, and that can help balance progesterone levels as well. Keeping blood sugar levels optimal is a really important tool to keeping hormone, hormones where they should be. And that's primarily because of this connection with insulin. And making sure that stress management is a really big priority. So we're going to talk about stress when we talk about cortisol, but stress management and hormones go very much hand in hand. 
So testosterone. Now, testosterone is a hormone that is predominantly found in males, but like estrogen, progesterone, actually everybody has testosterone. And even in males or females, testosterone, it's possible for testosterone to be high or low. So naturally, like I mentioned, males tend to have higher levels of testosterone, but I'm, I'm talking here really in the context of females more because that's who I speak to. Um, but when I speak about the symptoms of what this is going to look like, I'm going to explain why. So one of the things that is very much tied to high testosterone levels is PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is a very complex metabolic thing. It's tied to metabolic syndrome. It's tied to um, so high testosterone or high, it's high androgen levels. I'm saying testosterone, but your doctor may refer to it as high androgen levels. Um, it can be tied to estrogen not being where it should be, progesterone not being where it should be, infertility, and ovulation, all of these things that I've kind of mentioned. Um, PCOS is can be a little bit tricky to diagnose, and I say that that your doctor would maybe be like, it's so not. Um, but there are different, you know, key symptoms that determine it, or blood work that determines it, and it's complicated. So. I'm going to rhyme off some symptoms that come along with PCOS, but just because you have these symptoms doesn't mean you have PCOS. So this is definitely something you want to talk to your doctor about. So symptoms of PCOS might mean that your blood sugar isn't as regulated as it should be. It might mean that your body isn't as responsive to insulin. It might mean that you notice hair growth um, in around your body, on your face or in other areas of your body. It might mean that you don't have regular periods. It might mean that you're not ovulating. It might mean that you actually have physical cysts on your ovaries. And those are the more common symptoms. So again, if fertility issues is something that you're struggling with or um, you have hair that's growing in places that you're a little bit confused by, talk to your doctor because PCOS might be something that is worth ruling out. But just general high levels of testosterone can also cause um, lack of periods or amenorrhea. This may have nothing to do with PCOS. It can cause miscarriages, it can cause acne, it can cause hair growth anywhere in the body, it can cause symptoms of PMS. So kind of similar to high levels of high estrogen, so bloating, um, irritability, insomnia, um, fatigue, food cravings, all of those fun things that are um, associated with PMS symptoms. Um, high testosterone can cause headaches, it can cause a high sex drive, and it can cause aggressive behaviors that are a little bit um, unusual for a, a person. It can also cause an increase in appetite. So if you have noticed any of those symptoms in yourself, or even in a partner, honestly, because this is relevant to men as well, um, have you know, have them speak or you can speak to your doctor about it and have them check your testosterone levels. On the flip side, low testosterone can look like low libido, low energy, low motivation and depression. So again, if any of those are um, something that you regularly experience, have a chat with your doctor. So how are we going to optimize testosterone? Very similar to all the other hormones. So regular exercise, whole foods diet with lots of veggies, healthy fats, good old the flaxseed recommendation, I'm coming back to two tablespoons of flaxseed. Um, seaweed in particular can help with testosterone, so there's iodine in seaweed that's really important. Stress management is key, I'm going to get into why that is, but stress management with if a testosterone is high or low is really important, um, and regular exercise. So. Testosterone, if low testosterone is a problem, um, there are supplements that you can take to, to help increase testosterone. That is something that's worth talking to your naturopathic doctor about. But you see here how all of the recommendations that I'm talking about, um, it doesn't matter what the symptom of the hormone, or what the symptom is or what hormone is seems to be out of whack, a lot of the diet and lifestyle recommendations are the same. So let's talk about cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that we talk about when it comes to stress, and it is a hormone that can wreak havoc on our bodies, but it's also really important. So we, I talk a lot about cortisol, and I talk a lot about it in the context of stress, and today I'm just going to talk about it in the context of hormones. But here's the thing. All hormones, including, sorry, all sex hormones, so estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, including cortisol, are made from cholesterol. So one of the things I keep recommending is making sure you eat healthy fats. 
Healthy fats ensure that healthy cholesterol or good amounts of cholesterol is made, and that good cholesterol gets converted into good hormones. You can't have an optimal hormone level or healthy hormones without a base of good fats and good cholesterol. Now, when you are stressed, um, let's say that you're crossing street and a car comes speeding at you, cortisol levels will go through the roof. And what will happen when your cortisol levels are high in that moment is you're going to experience um, an increase in blood pressure, an increase in blood sugar, um, an increase, your pupils will dilate, your breathing will get deep, your pulse will start, your heart rate will start to increase, your immune system will shut down, your reproductive system will shut down, all to get you out of a very stressful situation. But most of us have high levels of stress ongoing. And so in that case, when cortisol levels are high, what happens is cortisol steals that cholesterol and makes it into itself. So all of those building blocks for all of those hormones get shunted into cholesterol. So, or sorry, shunted from cholesterol into cortisol. So when our stress levels are high, this is why all of our other sex hormones can be impacted. This is why stress impacts our testosterone and our estrogen and our progesterone. And so unless we're addressing stress management, we're not doing an optimal, we're not doing anything to optimize our hormones because cortisol will just keep stealing that backbone, that cholesterol backbone. And so stress management must, must, must be a part of every single hormone optimization plan. So if that's not something that you're already doing pretty consistently, now's the time to start. So I mentioned some of the symptoms of high cortisol when you're crossing a street and a car is coming screaming at you. But just to reiterate, so um, insulin resistance can happen. So your body doesn't respond as well to insulin, metabolic syndrome. Cortisol can actually cause fat deposits. So it can cause, um, you know, abdominal fat to be deposited, um, liver fat to be deposited. Cortisol can interact with the thyroid. I will talk about thyroid hormones in a separate video, but cortisol can interact with thyroid to cause hypothyroidism symptoms. Cortisol can exacerbate PMS symptoms, PCOS symptoms, so testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all of these are kind of coming together and cortisol is a very big player in all of it. Um, it lowers your immune function. It can cause high blood pressure. Having cortisol levels that are too low can actually be a dangerous medical condition. So this looks like cravings for sugar, caffeine or alcohol, poor concentration, low blood pressure and increased skin pigmentation. There are lots of people that have these symptoms that do not have low cortisol, okay? So I need just to be clear, just if you think, oh my God, I have low blood pressure and I crave sugar all the time, it doesn't mean you have low cortisol, but if you are concerned, if you've been under extreme stress for a really long period of time, generally your body can make the cortisol it needs, but if for any reason you're experiencing this, the skin pigmentation can be a good indicator there too. Definitely have your doctor check out your cortisol levels to make sure they are where you want them to be. And so how to optimize the hormones. So we've talked about this, but what I wanna talk about with cortisol is comes back to the stress management. So making sure that you're incorporating regular exercise. Exercise, is key for all of the things, all of the hormones, all of the optimization, including stress management. Deep breathing, mindfulness, meditation, whatever you wanna call it, whatever works for you, setting that up every day, setting a practice up every day where you can be consistent to help breathe, be present, and just to lower your, lower your stress levels is really important. Things like journaling, having fun, things like dancing, laughing with friends, getting together, social, having a good social group is one of the best things you can do to lower your stress and lower your cortisol. And lowering your cortisol is going to help optimize all your hormones. Eating mostly whole foods, avoiding caffeine is a big one. So caffeine can be a bit of a trigger for cortisol. So avoiding caffeine, avoiding alcohol when possible, um, you know, eating all things in moderation but not too much sugar not too much processed foods all of those can actually increase your cortisol as well so focusing on a diet that's mostly whole foods with lots of veggies and never forget a good night's sleep so i'm back to this a good night's sleep is important for detoxification for hormone metabolism for clearing out the body overnight it's also really key for stress management from a stress perspective, from a hormone metabolism perspective, you're never going to have an optimal hormone if you're not sleeping well. 
So if sleep is a challenge for you, falling asleep, staying asleep, getting a good night's sleep, if sleep is a challenge for you, I'm going to put a link in the video description to head on over and book a free sleep assessment call with me. This is a 45 minute call where we can talk about what are the challenges you're facing when it comes to sleep, how to get you started and where to go from here. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, comments. I hope you found this information helpful. Again, hormones is so complex. Um, there's so much I could talk about. I can do a more detailed look at any of these. If you want, let me know if that would be helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.